everybody this is eddie dashes we here for another episode we have a wonderful guest we we have Enoe Scott the fourth with us today and excited to learn about his journey his um his purpose his upbringing um before we start uh, the podcast a uh, divine purpose podcast let's go with our sponsor um that's his for senior management if you're looking for facility services call them now 617-227-0106 do you want to maximize the value of your commercial property and achieve optimal productivity and efficiency in your day-to-day -day business operations? That's where Dacius Facilities Management can help. DFM offers Boston area businesses help in key areas like building and preventive maintenance, handyman services, project and vendor management, and even security consulting at competitive rates. Call Dacius Facilities Management now at 617-237-0106 or visit DaciusFM.com today. Dacius FM, WWD Dacius, D A C I U S F M dot com, or call them now, 617 237 We have another sponsor. If you're looking for a great headshot, you should call Barry Brownstein or go on their website, Barry Brownstein Photography, um, for a great website, um, website um, headshot. Did you know that most people would rather have root canal versus having their headshot taken? Hi, I'm Barry Bronstein of Barry Bronstein Photography and I create headshots that people love. When you work with me, I help you to feel comfortable, show and teach you how to smile, to feel at ease in front of the camera and light you in a way that makes you look great. Groups of six or more, I take the studio to you. Either way, it would be great to work together to create headshots you'll actually love. Yes, give him a call, 781-237-0495. Like I said, we have Henry Scott the fourth with us today. Henry, how are you doing? Hey, Eddie, man. What's going on, brother? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be on your show. Appreciate you, family, for having me on. Let's get it, man. All right. So like um, Henry said, listen to this Divine Purpose podcast. Uh, this is our new episode with Henry Scott the Fourth. Welcome to the Divine Purpose podcast, where we transport you along one of the more dynamic journeys of life. Have you ever been curious to know what it takes to become a successful leader or about knowing the secrets of life through the Bible? How about engaging in conversation where no topics are off limits? We will take you to new levels with guests who can help you grasp the importance of your calling. Now, here's your host, Eddie Dacius, founder of Dacius Facilities Management. Right, so if if you're familiar with this, uh, with our podcast, uh, there's something we always ask our guests. So, Henry, what can you tell us about you today? Eddie, man, I just want to start off by saying, like I always tell tell people, I'm just an ordinary guy, uh, just trying to live my best life, man, and just be the best version of myself every day. I just want to start off with that, because um, a lot of people get caught up in a lot of the hype of just people like the celebrities and everything in, you know, seeing what greatness is. You, you you can be great you can be great in your own in your own footprint. So I just yeah. want to start by, by just by saying that about myself. I'm just an ordinary guy. But I'm happily married, been married for seven years. Shout out to my wife Tisha. I got three boys, 15, 13, and four. And I currently live in Augusta, Georgia. Shout out 706, baby. We here. <laughs> and uh, I was raised as a, as a military kid. Um, my dad served for 24 years. Um, my mom served for government service for 30 years. Um, I have three sisters. Shout out to my sisters, Erica, Monica, Leslie. They all doing big things, man. My oldest sister, uh, she, got, she got her MBA. My youngest, my youngest sister, Monica, she's 
she's in the Air Force, been in for 10 years, a major nurse, and my second oldest sister, Leslie, man, she owns her own business, man. And I mean, great, great chef. Um, but back, you know, back to talking about me, I guess. Um, I came out of high school, man. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I enrolled in college. Um, shout out Fayetteville State University. That's my hometown, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And then a crazy moment happened that kind of shook everybody's life. September 11, 2001 happened. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So kind of kind of hit me hard. Um, and I, I just decided to enlist. Um, my dad served, but I really never had a passion to serve. Okay. But in that moment, I kind of figured like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Maybe this, this is something that I need to do. So I signed up in the service. Um uh, 25 Bravo. For most people that don't know what that is, I was just an IT specialist. Okay. So I so I did that for about 18 and a half years. I started out as a private E2 with my little mosquito wings. <laughs> um, and then I uh, did an Army program, uh, a, a ROTC Green to Gold program, where I crossed over being enlisted to officer. And I kind of been doing that ever since. I served 18 and a half years on active duty. And I recently separated last year as an Army captain, and I continue to serve in the Army Reserves here in, in Augusta, Georgia at Fort Gordon. But I'm also an adjunct professor for the University of Maryland Global Campus, um, and I do project management consulting on, on the civilian side for the government, and I'm a, also a real estate investor. So, man, there you have it, man. That's my life in a box. Nah, man, come on. Cannot put all this in the box. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing a lot, man. You're doing a lot. Which of your accomplishments you the proudest? So my proudest accomplishments. So first off, I gotta say my my marriage and my kids. Um, just off just off gate is like my my most proud accomplishment because they are pretty much who shaped who shaped me who I am today, and who motivate me to be continue to becoming my best version. So. Um, they are my products of confidence, but professionally, I would just say starting our in our investment group, um, Scott Investment Group, with my sister Monica and my dad. Uh, we are here doing big things in the community. Yeah, just trying to raise the community, and uh, there's, a, there's a lot of great things that 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 we have in store for for the greater Augusta community. So, I think up to this point, professionally, that's like my greatest accomplishment. Um, let, let's talk about some challenges. Um, what are the three most challenging events in your life and how did they challenge you? So I say early on, I was a, I was a young parent. So uh, I had my first son at 24 and um, me and his mom had to figure out how to co-parent and being in the military, traveling a lot, that was, that was real difficult. Um, and I also deployed a lot. I went on five separate deployments over well, over four years in a four year time span um and it, it was just tough parenting but you know i had, had to do the best i could uh, with yeah. the situation i was dealt so i was on constant video calls with my son and um you know kids got a short attention span so i had to be creative with it um i try to limit the actual phone calls and do more video calls and uh luckily my military schooling always brought me back to augusta so i so so i can just say that was a blessing from god that i was always able to be somewhere close to him to where i could come out and just drive here or i was i was actually stationed here a couple times so um just trying to o o overcome that be the parent that my father was to me in a in a different context yeah so i so i think that was my biggest challenge so let, let's talk about favorite childhood memories. And like you just mentioned, your dad, uh, you said you, you were trying to be what you experienced from your father. So what was it going up? Man, there are just so many to choose from, bro. I mean, <laughs> I, I just, like I said, man, I, I just been so blessed. But if I had to pick one, um, me and my, well, my, my dad was, my dad, so I get my dad's work ethic. So he was in the military. We yeah. um, had a newspaper route we did. 
He was a projectionist at the movie theater. So I guess my best memory was sitting up there with him when he was a projectionist, a projectionist at the movie theater and just watching the movie from, you know, the high rise. You know what I'm saying? So those were, those were some great times. Me and my sister used to go up there and just, you know, watch all the movies when they first came out with him up there. So and that was when it was the manual pr- projection. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's so, so that was cool. Um, one one thing I, I realized, and we we started to ask our guests this question lately, in terms of like, all these memories help you become the person you are you are today. Like looking at some people, they 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 talk about their father's work ethic, or the way their mom raised them, and then they kept that as a as a constant things like they always remind to kind of keep them grounded, keep them focused, keep them motivated. So which, which are your, your process in terms of looking at those memories? Yeah. So, you know, you know, coming up as a, as a kid into your late teens, early twenties, you don't really understand the sacrifices that your parents make until a lot of times you get put in those situations yourself. Um, so just understanding the struggle, because I won't say I struggled, but I saw how hard my parents work. Yeah. Um, and, and it kind of come back full circle when you get older and you kind of actually sit and you think about those memories. You start, you start to, you know what I'm saying, see the little, the fine thing, the fine grain thing that they actually did. So yeah. that's what, so that what keeps me grinding because they're the same people they were 30 years ago when I was a kid. And that's the authenticity and the transparency, transparency that I try to project when with my kids and with just people in general um look so there was a big um like people don't like to say it but some people might not it might not apply to you where you thinking about things you wish you knew before you started your career like maybe things you need you you wish you knew before you enlisted in the army you know so can you share a few with us today (laughs) Man, there's one hot one, and now we talk about this all the time. Um, financial literacy, brother. And a lot of us are going through that right now with COVID hit and the economy being the way it is. Understanding what passive income is, understanding what investments are, just understanding how money works. Because a lot of us, the 90% of us, are going to be working professionals. Yeah. So we got to understand how money works so it can work as hard for us as we do for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think my biggest thing was the financial literacy piece, um, was one thing that I wish I knew starting out my career. Hey, can let, let, let's go. So one thing you're going to know every answer you give me, I'm going to try to go deeper, you know, because we want the, the audience to kind of understand what it takes what exactly you're talking about in terms of when you say uh, financially a uh, financial literacy can you give us an example if there's something that happened that can trigger that trigger that thought i just would say just investing in general whether it's um through the stock market where there's mutual funds um, whether it's just saving money, the importance of saving money, being frugal. Um, and I would just say uh, this. When I first started out, every check I got, I spent it. I spent it. Yeah. And, and there, was a, there was a point to where I had got a big bonus. Okay. And not understanding the power of money, I, I done developed so much debt that I spent my whole bonus that I got. And I got about a $16,000 bonus. Yeah. Off debt. And ever since then, that moment taught me the importance of money because yeah. I'm deploying, I'm serving my country, but I'm putting in some hard work. But I'm giving the money away to the government. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So that was one of my defining moments is when I had to gave my sixteen thousand dollar bonus check. Just gave it gave it to, you know, the creditors and whoever else I borrowed money from. And after that, I just been real frugal and it's starting to get smart yeah and so is there is there a piece of advice you will give somebody um who starting the career 
I would say understand, read one, read books. Any book, go to the library. Get you a library card. Now everything is online. You can Google. There's free material out there. Read on finances because you're going to, you are going to work. Even whatever, and whatever your passion is, it's going to require you to do, do, to do work. The one thing that you need to do and safeguard is your money because money is your pathway to freedom. Yeah. If you don't understand how money works, you will never achieve whatever that dream is, that, that, that financial goal that you set. Mm. So just read books, um, get financial literate, and just maximize the dollar. Maximize the dollars that you make. And, and I agree, and I think this is great advice. Um, let's talk about, you said you, when you were in high school, you uh, you didn't really know what you wanted to do, right? But you might have some interest. The question goes like that. So what was your dream job in high school, in college, and now, <laughs> or, or like compared to now? So in college, I, I, was, I was big into sports, um, so football, I, play, I started out playing football, fell in love with that, but I got injured like my sophomore year. So I had to kind of shift shift goals and I was pretty good in basketball. So um, basketball was all ha had, had been my dream since 10th grade. I played a little AU ball, never really played like school ball. So that dream kind of came and went pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but with college, I, I just tried to find my way. And I was only in college for six months. Um, before I enlisted in the military. Um, so college, I really didn't have no real aspirations. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I kind of say when you're young, try to figure it out. Try to figure out what drives you. And it may not be your end state, but it may be a pathway to get there. Yeah. I didn't have that type of knowledge. I didn't, you know, I wasn't seeking that. I was an average student in high school. Okay. Right? And, and this is why I say I'm nobody special. I was average student in high school um just a normal kid they're trying to figure figure life out but but september 11th had me on uh, september 11th happened and and as we always say um through tragedy there's triumph right yeah yeah so that was kind of my my moment that helped me figure things out and pretty much shape my pathway to where i'm at now